Wisconsin won the toss and Kirk in a sign of confidence. They want the football against this Michigan defense and they'll get it after a fair catch. So here comes Alex Hornibrook who is not considered by many fans around the country as elite but his numbers have been elite. His analytics are excellent. Yeah and, and guy that's been playing a lot of football in fact for three years now as a starter. He's been here as a starter wasn't a great night for him. It was only his second start of his career. But he's got a lot of uh, tread on the tires. 24 and 4 as a starter. Really nothing he hasn't seen. And big reason that Paul Christ in this atmosphere wins the coin toss and elects to take the football. There's the student section. Not quite full because it's fall break, but they are making plenty of noise. And the first handoff goes to Jonathan Taylor, and the man is averaging 170 yards per game to lead the nation behind that big offensive line you talked about. All these guys rate so highly, especially as run blockers. And Michael Dieter, 63, kind of the anchor up there. But these guys are all veterans, all been around and know what to expect and went against this defense a year ago. Jonathan Taylor is the guy to keep an eye on. But Kendrick Pryor, A.J. Taylor, and Jake Ferguson, they've got to win some one on one battles against the defense that's going to play a lot of man coverage. Taylor got six, second and four. Got it again. Stutter step and a couple of catches for carries, I should say, have yielded 14 yards Impressive. against this Michigan defense. They'll miss Gary, but there's so many talented, dynamic pass rushers in that group. Yeah, up front, you want to keep an eye, especially with Gary down on 15. Chase Winovich, kind of the leader, relentless approach. Hudson Bush, Gill has come on this year, 36. Linebacking crew tonight will be aggressive. See how the matchups I talked about the Wisconsin receivers and tight ends. These guys play a lot of man to man leader Hill and also David Long on the other side. May have come out Wisconsin an aggressive approach against this defense allowing less than 100 yards rushing per game. Third carry for Taylor drags a couple men for four more. Uh, you got to really be impressed with this offensive line coming in with his first series and I talked about in the open Chris I thought you know even though it's a veteran group. Maybe just to kind of ease into the game, maybe a few play action passes for, for Alex Hornibrook to kind of maybe then go back to the running game. But no, no, they lined up, let Michigan's attacking defense know it's coming, and still a lot of success running here in these first few plays. It just sound like a Wisconsin offensive line. Dietzen, Dieter, Piatish, <laughs> Ben Shaw. That time it's Taiwan Deal spelling Taylor, and then he's knocked down right at the line of scrimmage. Yeah, Michigan got a good push into that backfield. It's like, it's like Quiddy Pay, 19, actually pushed him back and allowed Devin Gill and Winovich to clean it up. Now you find out here on third down what Don Brown decides to do. Very multiple, known as an aggressive blitzer, man to man, but likes sometimes to make you think that, and will sit back and play brackets coverage or play some zone. Yeah they're by far the most blitz happy defense in the Big Ten. Garrett Groshek is the running back in the game empty backfield play clock at two Hornibrook delivers quickly out of the pocket batted in the air and then caught but short of a first down. Kendrick Pryor on the carom. Devin Bush got a hand on it and it's fourth. He's actually trying to get the ball thrown to A.J. Taylor off to the left. Watch the ball thrown to Forbit in the middle. Ten does a great job of reading the eyes. Devin Bush reading Horny Brooks' eyes. But the presence of mind by Pryor to go up there at least gives Wisconsin a completion. But they are short for the first down. Anthony Lottie to punt to the very dangerous Donovan Peoples-Jones. And a touchdown return against Nebraska earlier this season. It's a low boot, not particularly good, and will bounce out of bounds near the 20 yard line. Well, Shea Patterson was born in Toledo, Ohio, not far from Ann Arbor. Grew up a Michigan fan, as that had season tickets here. He ends up here by way of Ole Miss. I'll tell you the story if you don't know it, but he is now kind of living his boyhood dream. We get better and better adjusting to a very different style of offense than what he operated at Oxford. Kirk. Yeah, known really as through high school and at Ole Miss, dual guy, a guy that can run a spread offense, and has had to adjust to Pep Hamilton and Jim Harbaugh's scheme here, more of a more of a traditional drop back. Looking to throw in the first play, delivers far sideline. They use the cushion. That's Nico Collins, the 
Very talented sophomore from Birmingham. And here's the big fellas up front. Cesar Ruiz was his battery mate at IMG Academy, snapping the ball to Patterson in high school. And they, they feel that he's probably improved the most from that Notre Dame game to where they are tonight. Kron Higdon, an Iron Man in that backfield the last few weeks. Ben Mason is solid nine. for them. Donovan Peoples Jones and Nico Collins will get deep. And Zach Gentry at that second level, a great target at six foot seven. On second and three, Karan Higdon totes the rock. The workhorse senior from Florida knocked down about a yard and a half short of the marker. Here's that Badger front seven. And in this defensive line, they're just going to try to consume blocks to free up the linebackers, Edwards and Connolly, to be able to make plays. Van Winkle is their best pass rusher, hopefully healthy. Tweaked an ankle against BYU. This is the question really tonight. A lot of different pieces will be going in and out. Fion Hicks is probably their best cover man, number 20. But a yard and a half needed for the first down. Higdon, he gets it. They've had to adjust the offense, or chosen to adjust the offense, to make use of Patterson's talent. You don't usually see Michigan in a shotgun you know, on third and short. No, no, it, it, it's a combination. I, I think they are learning on, on kind of on the run with Jim Harbaugh. More, more if you think about his days in the NFL, his days at Stanford. Think of a pro style approach and it's still the basic foundation is still that but they've also incorporated some of the things that Shea Patterson's done throughout his career when he was at Ole Miss more of the spread look. Higdon now motions back in Ben Mason the fullback flanking Patterson. And the Badgers crowd the line here's a play action look Patterson an effective scrambler and he's going to be knocked down for a very short loss he was flushed at there Olive Songapolu from the middle came in there yeah they, they do a good job he had Zach Gentry off to his left it broke free and I don't think he saw him and then the, you know Wisconsin dialing up some pressure of their own with Jim Leonard kind of a safe blitz there with TJ Edwards but one thing they want to do tonight with Shea Patterson is corral him just keep him in the pocket not give him any lanes or allow him to get outside and break contain they did a very good job there just kind of keeping him simple keeping it in the pocket and squeezing him only they rush three times three man here he's going to escape this time Patterson spied and tackled there by Ryan Conley the fine senior inside linebacker yeah, it was good coverage downfield second play in a row you know for, for a defense that had a lot of question marks in the back end their starting safety is Scott Nelson. He's out. We mentioned he had a targeting call last week, so he misses the first half. Paul Christ and his defensive coordinator, Jim Le Leonard, just, just kind of juggling between the suspension and some of the injuries. You're going to see six or seven different guys, but I'll tell you, these last two plays, playing zone, but in great position and taking away the options downfield. You don't need a pass rush because there are so many inexperienced guys playing in that back end tonight for the Badgers. On third and six, Patterson delivers complete and the catch is made for a first down that's Ronnie Bell with that with that motion, people Jones yeah with the motion they end up in kind of a bunch formation and it makes it a little bit tough for this Wisconsin defense to figure out who's going to actually get out into the flat you see the late reaction by Hicks he was kind of waiting 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 and then he breaks and he broke a little bit late and gave him a cushion and made it a little bit easier nice design play there by Pep Hamilton and Shea Patterson to get that ball out quickly. You get eight on third and six. All right, all right, all right. Play action again. Patterson took a peek downfield and now again will scramble and throws on the run. He underthrew a man, but coming back was Higdon to make a catch at the Wisconsin 40. He's lobbying for a catch and they're conferring right now. It's rule to catch. Take another look. Ball underthrown. Pretty good effort by Karan Higdon. I think he did get his wrist, his left wrist under there. The ball did not touch the turf. Heck of an athletic play there by the running back, who again improvised with the quarterback. He was just an outlet right in front of the linebacker and then saw his quarterback in trouble and started to take off. Patterson three for three. Higdon knocked down. Darting in there to make the tackle was Reggie Pearson, Kirk, one of those young safeties who has to step up with Dixon out. Boy, he did not hesitate at all coming up there and quickly making a play. 
young player. He really hasn't played. He's no, no, first no, no. action. No, I was talking to Paul Chris on the on the field before the game, and I was talking to different numbers, safeties, and he said, then seven. I go, seven? He goes, yeah, true freshman. I said, well, he's probably had some mop-up duty. He looked at me, grand, and he goes, no. No, tonight will be his first action. His first action is a start in the big house. Right. Patterson from the pocket. Long throw. The catch is made by Oliver Martin. Really spreading the ball around early. Another first down. And say, what I'm seeing right now with Wisconsin because of their secondary concerns is the bend but don't break mentality. Playing zone, have some cushion, keep the ball in front of you. And the answer for Michigan is if you're going to give me that cushion, we're going to play pitch and catch, and we'll take the 10 yards very quickly and step out of bounds for a first down to Oliver Martin. So that Wisconsin, if they're going to play. Yeah, he's a very talented young guy. Saw him warm up slinging the ball around. A dual threat quarterback with the Badgers ready for that wrinkle. Knock him for a yard loss. It's Conley again. Yeah, and, and if they're ready for it, you know, you wonder how, how many other people are ready for it. You would think about Dylan McCaffrey as a backup, but Joe Milton comes in at 6'5", 235, and as you see, his first snap of the season. So Jim Harbaugh and Pep Hamilton throwing a little curveball there, at least for a play with Joe Milton. That drive is going pretty good with two. <laughs> it's going pretty good. 11th play of the drive coming up. <laughs> you can outfox yourself, can't you? Badgers rush for Patterson gets it out quickly, and the catch is made by Gentry, the big 6'7 tight end, is one of Patterson's best buddies on this team. Yeah, and I don't, not only is he probably a great guy, he, he's a, any quarterback's good buddy. It's 6'7. You talk about a catch radius. We had him last year in some games that we called with Michigan. He has come so far to become more of a complete tight end with his blocking, his route running. Jim Harbaugh said this week the one area he could just go to become an elite player. It's the yards after the catch. Give me a quarterback at Albuquerque. Yeah, yeah. Third and six. Higdon is the back. Patterson from the pocket. Had protection. Now tries to escape and he'll be tackled short of the marker. So the Badgers, a good job containing him as a runner. Eric Burrell, the safety, stopped him. It's fourth down. Watch these again, that formation where you end up getting three receivers over here and you're going to find different route combination. Uh, Nico Collins gets downfield, but I want you to watch how well covered this is. I mean, this is about the third or fourth time Shea Patterson, where are you going to go with the ball? They're, they're, they're doing a very good job of leveraging those receivers and taking away his options, forcing him to scramble. Quinn Nordin, a reliable kicker, 8 of 9. He's just got a, a monster leg. This is from 41. But he had a little bit of problems in warm-up. He was all over the place. And it's reflected in that miss as the Wolverines have a 13-play drive but come up empty. He's a grandpa now. Talked to him about his 14-year career in the NFL. Paul Christ was his tight end coach when Harbaugh was a quarterback with the Chargers in those eventful Ryan Leaf years. So the Badgers fake it to Taylor. Hornibrook on the run delivers a strike, and it's a first down at the 35-yard line. That's Danny Davis. Yeah, love this call here. Play action this way. Danny Davis going that way. Good job with an overly aggressive defense. Try to get them out of position. And that, that wasn't a lot of separation with uh, Brendan Watson. That was just a great throw, an accurate throw on the run by the lefty Hornibrook that gives his receiver Davis a chance to go up and bring in the uh, first down catch. Bunch of tight ends in there, including a backup center, Jason Erdman, who wears 96 when he plays tight end. He's in the game. And they try to spring Taylor free nice little stutter step move at the line of scrimmage and he darts forward for about four more and the thing about Jonathan Taylor there was a time I think last couple of weeks be before he got into the Nebraska game there was BYU there was Iowa he was just trying to make it happen instead of kind of letting the game come to him last year he built a reputation for having incredible vision and patience and then the light feet to be able to get out of some traffic and hit it and go the distance. Last week he got back into that groove and he's off to a very good start against this defense tonight. He's got it again. Yeah, second most yards after contact in the FBS, and you can see the strength. He's also able to take it the distance, too, by the way. Oh, yeah. Boy, watching the trenches, you watch, watch the inside 
63, Dieter. Look at that. Look how, how physical it's going to be at the line of scrimmage with this veteran offensive line pushing people around. Some pancake blocks, but the vision there of Taylor and also the strength to be able to pull out of some arm tackles. Guy that had instant success. His second college game was a 200 yard game, yet he remains really humble and grounded and hungry. See the strength, and I'm going to show you his speed. This is the New Jersey Hunt top tailbacks in all of college football. Garrett Groshek, who got a scholarship, came there as a walk on number 37, spells him now on second and nine. Fast paced first quarter. Hornibrook from the pocket delivers complete across the middle. That's Jake Ferguson, the athletic tight end who makes the catch. Well, there's again Hornibrook's experience. He tries to squeeze one in. Watch the linebacker here as Jake Ferguson comes across. He's just reading the eyes of the quarterback, but Hornibrook, because he gets rid of it quickly, he's just able to, to sneak that in there by the linebacker, Ross. And how about Jake Ferguson, the grandson of Barry Alvarez, getting just enough separation there to give Hornibrook a shot? Yeah, just, he didn't say, you know, my grandpa is a Wisconsin legend, but I'm, I'm making a name for myself. Oh, this kid, swag. It's a freshman. Yeah. Oh, he's got a big career. I think it's a Taiwan deal. Hornibrook has lots of time and delivers inaccurately. Receiver Kyle Pennington, the tight end, was well covered there. So far, they've been able to keep the pass rush. Away from him. Yeah, they have. You know, we, we, we came in, you know, of course, Don Brown is going to turn loose this defense. Even without Rashawn Gary, you're still pretty confident that they can get after a quarterback. And the, the guy to always watch when he drops back to throw is Chase Winovich and also Kalik Hudson, seven. A familiar complaint from Jim Harbaugh to the officials. He felt his guys were held on that last play. On second and ten is Groshek on a delay and the physical 213 pounder knocked down by Winovich who says I hope they run to my side every time tonight they, they ran at him successfully last year yeah, and they pulled Michael Dieter the, the guard around pulling from the left right there to the, to the right and give Winovich a lot of credit he sat it right in there and handled a 300 pounder and it gets off of him and makes the play. That's what he wanted. And he got it. Yeah, he's got more run stops this year than any edge defender in college football. So if you want to run at him, he's ready for you. Third and eight. Final minute of the quarter. Here comes the pressure. Hornybrook escapes. But he will be slung down by Devin Bush for a short loss. And it's fourth down. Boy, Twum Ford doesn't get picked up. It's a miscommunication. Beat it right here, the center. And the left guard, Dieter, they just let Twum Ford come right through the middle. Nobody picks him up. And Alex Hornibrook, it's tough enough to deal with his defense, even when they're, they are blocked. But that time, just a mix up between the, the offensive guard and the, and the center for Wisconsin's offense. Bumfour has to come sprinting off and Michigan will spend a timeout rather than take a penalty as the Badgers Lottie tries to pin Michigan back deep. One second in the first quarter. This may have taken wheels up home to celebrate but plenty have turned up here. Yeah they sure have. Peoples Jones steps up. And fakes the fair catch the punt bounces and is down right there so Wisconsin will take over to begin the second quarter. At the 14 yard line. Set for the second quarter from the big house. Michigan taking over from the 14. Long march in their first possession. Came up empty with a missed field goal. And it's a keeper for Patterson. And Patterson shows the speed in the clear midfield. And they run him down. Shelly Patterson knocked up inside the five. What a time to call this. You see pressure here in collapses down and a great read by Shea Patterson. They collapse down on their look to Chris Evans. Nobody's on the outside to contain him. They lose their way. You wonder with some of the inexperience if whether or not that may have affected the back end 
and their lack of run support they were lucky to end up catching up to him and pushing him out of bounds the progressive pylon cam shows he's out at about the five 81 yards for the quarterback first and goal has he caught his breath yet give it to Higdon who picks his way down to about the two yard line but that's that's the part of Shea Patterson that I think all of us when we heard that he was going to Michigan to run more of a pro style we thought about okay you got the Pep Hamilton Jim Harbaugh pro style and then you throw in a little bit of Shea Patterson and his mobility and his athletic ability and what he can do eventually this is going to be a dangerous offense because of plays like that really interesting hybrid attack they're using so far tonight second and goal Higdon shifts around to the right now Higdon finally did take the handoff after some hesitation and barrels into the end zone. But that drive all about the 81 yard run by the quarterback. Well anytime you see a quarterback and a running back with an exchange like that. That's a read where the quarterback and the running back are trying to read the same player. They're not quite on the same page. And eventually Shea Patterson just let go of the ball and let the running back kick and take it over. Jake Moody boots it deep. Actually not that deep. Brookshank awkwardly fields it. Puts a hand down but keeps his knees off the ground and now weaves his way through the coverage team out near the 30. Celebrities, you look at Ken Griffey Jr. We had a chat with him earlier. I guess his son, yeah, is a football player, yeah, being yeah. offered here, being, being offered by by Michigan. He already had an older son that went to Arizona. There's Blake Griffin, who plays with the, with the Pistons, big college football fan, big OU, obviously Sooners fan. Yeah, he was a guest picker on College Game Day at the Red River yeah. Rivalry, right? Yeah, it was one of the one Lee Corso pulled the guns out down there. Mr. Corso's pick on Game Day this morning of an upset by the Badgers. But it's Michigan and has jumped on top. Taylor, right side. Yeah, not escape the grasp there. Tyree Kennel, the safety. Now after that touchdown, you're going to see a, a Michigan defense, I think, play with even a different level of intensity and emotion. And these Badgers, this veteran group that's been on the road, and they've won every game on the road since they lost here two years ago. They have to rely on that experience to be able to kind of just weather this storm and rely on that experience to be able to get through this because it's going to be a different I think intensity that they're facing here in this series. Second and five Taylor again and he muscles his way for a first down. <laughs> Look at him. He's still going now that, to the 45. His leg drive you showed his sprint. In high school, and, and he does break away and hit some big plays. But I'm telling you that between the offensive line and his leg drive, you think you have him stopped for about a two yard gain? That was the initial contact. There's five more yards, six linemen are pushing him. He ends up getting eight or nine more yards after the initial contact. Three Wolverines. Yeah, he's carrying them. Then he, of course, gets a little assist there with the offensive lineman. Ben Shaw gave him a little push. And the sophomore from Jersey has got it again. Taylor in the clear. Stiff arm of Met Metellus. It is driven out inside the 35 as the Badgers try to answer quickly. Oh, at the left side of this offensive line, Van Lennon, Dieter, watch the push that they get on that left side. You got a guard pulling around, the big tight end there that's in to, to play where the offensive lineman, Erdman, and then that natural ability with the vision to cut back. And then he's able to get valuable yards once he gets into that secondary. But give that offensive line a lot of credit on the left side for opening that up. 23 there by Taylor is averaging 7.3 so far tonight. He gets a breather. It's Tyron Deal, but it's an end around hand off to Kendrick Pryor. And he's sprinting around the edge and into the end zone. And the Rogue Warriors from Madison do answer quickly. 71 yards in four plays 33 on the touchdown. Impressive. Absolutely. Wisconsin with Paul Chris uses this watch the block that ends up coming in from the left into the right. Nice crack block right there 
by the back by the uh, receiver Jack Dunn and then it's just the speed of prior Michigan collapsing down because of those last few runs by Taylor and, and they start to pinch great time by Paul Chris to get the ball in the perimeter. He's been somewhat effective in the jet sweep this year but that's by far his best carry. Gallianoni knocks in the PAT. Embry Thomas is deep. He's got one kickoff return for touchdown this year but Zach Hintz rarely allows kick returns. Strong leg typically hammers the ball into the end zone just like that. Let's go Big back. guys up front. Go back to that touchdown again. The runs by Taylor sets this up. Great block right there by 16. Uh, uh, done. And then it's just the rest is just Michigan out of position. And then the speed of prior to get around the corner. But keep in mind, Dunn makes that block. He's 5'7, 172 pounds on a crack block, taking out the safety. But I think the reason it went all the way to the end zone, Chris, is because Michigan, they lost their eye discipline there. And they, uh, prior took advantage of it. Did Ambry Thomas, a corner for Michigan, number one in the game at receiver? He's at the bottom of the formation. Play clock at three. Does Patterson see it? It's Thomas on the end around and try to get a speedy DB in there to make a play on offense, but the Badgers flush it out. Both little wrinkles so far have, have not yielded good results. No, and that, that was just a great job by the defense pursuing and recognizing what you said. Anytime you see it, hey, what is the corner doing out there? Chances are he's either a decoy or he's going to get the football. And they saw as soon as he went into motion and got a chance to get his hands on the ball, that defense was flying up to help out. And take that completely away. Good team pursuit. Chris Evans, who has not been able to play in the first three conference games for Michigan, number 12, is back healthy. They motion him out to the left. Patterson from the pocket against the three man rush delivers a low throw. Peoples Jones couldn't come up with it. That's the first incompletion for the quarterback. It was five for five and it had that 81 yard run to set up the touchdown. I mean he's 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 really been in sync tonight. This offense is has looked good in their first couple drives. We'll see what happens here on this third down and long. See what Jimmy Leonard decides to do with the defense if they bring pressure or remember with the inexperience on the back end maybe played a little bit more conservatively. Jim Leonard the former Wisconsin All-American 10 year NFL veteran in his second year as defensive coordinator. They try some twists. They don't get near the quarterback, and Peoples Jones doesn't get near the marker. Waving his finger, saying, uh uh. Is Harold, the quarterback, stepping up tonight? It's fourth down. That's a win there. Harold gives him the cushion, which I think made Patterson think, hey, I've got a chance. You see how he ends up getting off of him. And because of that room, he throws the football out there. But the important thing for Harold as a freshman is he makes that tackle after the reception. No yards after the catch. Will Hart has had a tremendous start to the season, punting for Michigan. He booms it deep to Jack Dunn. He tries to dart up the sidelines. Pretty good return, and Wisconsin will be set up near the 40 when we come back. Deadlocked at seven, early second. Detroit native very eager to get out there in the second yeah. half saw him in a pregame. He's definitely looking like he's ready to play some football. The Badgers after answering Michigan score in the last drive back to work and they feed Taylor again and just barrels ahead continues and to drive it. and drag tacklers up near midfield. And we, I hope we're keeping a stat of yards after contact with this guy because he, he gets hit, he gets hit again about a yard or two past the line of scrimmage and gets at least another five or six. And by the way it's not like you break an arm tackle and then you pick up some yards. He's carrying people for six and seven and eight yards. This defense that is allowed less than 100 yards a game. Right now, the offensive line and Taylor, that combo is off to a great start. Got nine on first down. Mishandles snap. Hornybrook turned to hand it off. Didn't have the ball. Had to jump on it. They lose two. It'll be third and three. Yeah, Chris, not only did he not have the ball, he, he, he lost the ball. Once it was on the ground, watch his eyes. He, he starts to look back behind him like, did it go behind me? I mean, he's lucky that he came back and, and located that ball before Devin Bush came close to getting on it. Let's see if that play proves to be costly. They need three to keep the drive alive. And now the crowd, which has been pretty quiet, more of a reactive than proactive crowd, but they're trying to make some noise now. Groshek, usually in on third down to the left of the quarterback. Hornibrick pressure off the edge, and they've got him. And the ball 
that came out in that previous play on a second and one, ruined the momentum, and Josh Uche yep. with his third sack of the season. And with Rashawn Gary down, Uche has become the best edge rusher, along with Winovich. Just does a good job of disguising where the pressure's coming from. The offensive line goes, they call for a left call, moving that right tackle, Edwards, down. Nobody's there to pick up Uche. Give Don Brown an assist there for the confusion up front of the Wisconsin O-line. 19 sack of the season, 12 different Wolverines have a sack, but they've roughed the punter. Lottie got it away, flags fly. Let's see if it's a personal foul. A five-yard penalty would not give Wisconsin a first down. Dan Capron, he's the referee. Jordan Glasgow with the hair hanging out below the helmet. He's the guy that got in there on Lottie. There's a conversation about whether this is going to be the five yard or 15 yard variety and yeah. it's crucial. Yeah. Well he, he's I saw him shaking his head. No. Paul Chris asking the same question. He, they're going to decline it. Running into the kicker. Defense number 29. The penalty is declined. First down. So they'll take the result of the punt and Michigan will take over at the 32. Wolverines from the 32. Chris Evans is the back. McCune, the tight end motions to the right side. They're going to roll that direction, and it's a low throw caught by Nico Collins. He's wrestled down at the 41, just short of a first down. And a little bit of a different approach tonight against this Wisconsin defense. Remember going back to week one when they played Notre Dame. It was a rough night for this offense, only 58 yards rushing. Talked about in the open their identity. Look at these last five games, 228 on the ground. Pep Hamilton and, and crew decided to get more physical with Karan Higdon. And we've so far have not seen that. It's been more of a spread attack and letting Shea Patterson throw the ball more. Higdon hammers forward. They do move the change. Ryan Conley stopped him. Is that a, a concession to the, the yeah. skills of Patterson or just trying to keep Badgers off balance? I think it's a respect for the Wisconsin defensive front. Their, their defensive scheme is built where they have three down linemen that are all 300 pounds. Their job is to eat two blocks if they can and then free up those linebackers against the run to make plays. So maybe they're trying to spread it out to eventually get back to the running game with Higdon. See how big Sunga Paolo, the 345 pounder from Pago Pago, American Samoa. Tough to move. Play action. Patterson takes a look downfield and delivers to a wide open receiver. And Nick Eubanks, the tight end, is down inside the 30. Badgers forgot about him. Yeah, they sure did. I think Van, Van Ginkle right out here. No, typically is a pass rusher. He's out in coverage and he gets confused. Right there, he decides to come up, and when he comes up, the ball goes right over top of him. Good read, good patience that time by Shea Patterson, and Michigan continuing to attack on the perimeter to get the ball into the hands of the receivers and tight ends. Yeah, Patterson they, now nine to ten. They feel their tight end group as good as anybody in the country. We've seen Ubex and Gentry feature. They've targeted McCune once, and then first down. Knocked down Higdon after a short gain. They, they are crowding that line too. And a lot of a lot of these offenses today in college football, Michigan is, is included. You know, the play could be called, and depending on the look of the defense, it could become a run or it could become a pass. And you know, the style of defense Wisconsin plays may be giving Shea Patterson the look that we've got to try to attack more on the edges, and as opposed to trying to run into where all that traffic is. Higdon split out wide to the left on second and nine, and the Badgers try to close in. Patterson is quick to roll out. Preston Juke circles back and will be dropped right there. Sacked by T.J. Edwards, the leader of that Wisconsin defense. Well, he is a, a veteran player, and I want you to look into the backdrop and try to look to see what Shea Patterson's seeing. A lot of people who are covered. It would have been better, obviously, to just take this and, and take cut your losses, either throw it away or try to scramble for a few yards if you can instead. That's the, that's the one downside of a creative quarterback. He never gives up on a play, and because he keeps fighting for it, sometimes it backfires, and Edwards comes up with a big one. Yeah, he thought he could spin away from TJ. Did not happen. Third and 16. It's a slant. Catch made by Collins, who's hit hard and knocked down five yards short of the marker there. 
by Burrell and Reggie Pearson, that newcomer to college football. Yeah, how about him just coming out and happen to make plays for this defense? And he's not he's not shy he at all. Himself, no, he? he's not. They're, they're going to love how aggressive he is. We saw him up in the run, and then that time when Collins makes the pass, Michigan called that pass to set up the, to give their their uh, kicker Nordine a better chance here. Yeah, this from 42. He was wide right from 41 earlier. And Nordine, not the prettiest looking kick, but he got it through. His streak of seven straight makes was snapped with that earlier miss, but he's put the Wolverines on top 10-7. Yeah, you, I don't. With Nordine, you're never going to have to worry about the distance. It's just going to be about the accuracy. The guy who kicked a 55-yarder when he was in eighth grade. Yeah. Okay. But yeah, yeah. I mean, you and I, you and I saw him on the field before the game from like was it 64, yeah. or 65? About halfway up. Halfway the upright. up. Yeah. yeah. So distance with three, not an issue. I think he's a guy that would like to drive like a 400 yards off the tee. If he makes a birdie, that's okay. But yeah. it's really about about the big contact, right? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Big leg. Seven play, 44-yard drive. Wolverines back on top by three. Patterson continues to be really sharp. They haven't gone downfield for huge chunks yet, but he's 10 of 11 for 99 yards. Great. Efficiency is what it's all about. Hasn't turned the ball over. You know, for Michigan over the last couple of years, everybody wants to get on hardball in this offense. And reality is they've turned the ball over at the quarterback position. That's had a lot to do with why they haven't won some of these bigger games. And I think the greatest thing you can say about Shea Patterson is he's taking care of the football. Shank. Let this one sail into the end zone. He'll leave it there. Taking care of the ball. Also, he's got more touchdown passes already. Ten than all the Michigan quarterbacks combined. For a touchdown. Hard year. to come by. Yeah. Play action on first down. Hornybrook lobs it into traffic and it's picked off. Interception by Metellus. Weaving his way inside the 15. And the Knights' first turnover goes to the Wolverines. Uh, he's expecting man-to-man -man coverage by David Long. He got fooled by the coverage. Good job of disguising it by Long. 22, you'll see him off to the left. He's expecting Long to run with the receiver on the outside downfield. Instead, he comes off of him. And by coming off of him, he has a chance to make a play on the ball. It goes up in the air. And there's Metellus. A guy who has really been the catalyst for this defense in the first half of the season. The right place at the right time as a leader comes up with that big interception. But give David Long a lot of credit there. Disguising coverage, breaking on the ball, and making that play to help Metellus get the pick. Yeah, 31-yard return sets up Michigan in the red zone. And Ben Mason, the big 255-pound fullback. They fake it to him. Patterson... Took a peek, scrambles, and just heaves that out of bounds. Heavy pressure from Andrew Van Ginkel off the edge. Yeah, that time he did just get rid of it. You know, that time, that's Wisconsin's best pass rusher, Van Ginkel, who's been nursing an ankle since that BYU game. Played a little bit against Iowa and Nebraska. And they have been spoiled over the years with outside linebacker play and getting pressure by just rushing four. It's, a, it's a good night for edge rushers with long blonde hair tonight. <laughs> yeah. Winovich on the side. Good call. Ben Ginkle over here. Higdon is the back on second and ten. And Karan's got it, but he's going absolutely nowhere. T.J. Edwards imposing himself. Boy, he is a good, a good linebacker and has been just one of the more underrated players in the country. You know, what I love about him is he doesn't hesitate at all. He's right here. He steps up and is able to meet Karan Hickton before the uh, the tight end, Yukon, had a chance to make a block at all. He's a playing a couple of sacks against Nebraska. Had the clinching pick against Iowa. The Kuhn, I should say. So it's third and ten. And Patterson for the end zone. Lofts it. Tried to get it to Nico Collins. Jump ball with Rashad Wild Goose. And the Wolverines go three and out after the takeaway. Yeah, he's got great size, and that's what makes him such a threat down in that area. It's a heck of a throw. Really good coverage by the young freshman, Wild Goose. He's able to separate that football for yep. Nico Collins so with that size. Guy, he to just get hasn't high point played in. a lot of football. And Wild Goose in there making plays on a talented receiver. Exactly. Jim Leonard schooling up these young DBs, so. 
Nordine again and slides this one through and he's two for three. But the Wolverines do not cash the takeaway in for seven despite taking over in the red zone. Just 48 plays combined so far in this game. There's Jake Moody. And he drives the kick right to the goal line. Crookshank will leave it right there. He's really? A great not, move not tonight. Not much. Not much. Ah. Taylor <laughs> delay. Usually a pick five is pretty good. Yeah, of all the favorites. <laughs> now Taylor already 79 yards rushing in this first half. Got three there. We'll try it out. And here comes Garrett Groshek. He took Taylor and Taiwan Deal up to his lake house, northern Wisconsin. They went jet skiing. And, and Taylor was so excited that his buddy Groshek took him to get some homemade ice cream. He, he couldn't rave enough about the homemade ice cream in Wisconsin. <laughs> Ornibrook on the run delivers a low throw in traffic. Taylor couldn't come up with it. It'll be third and long. And we're 230 left till half and Alex Hornibrook has three completions uh, in this football game and only attempted six passes. So it's been a, a conservative approach by Paul Chris a patient approach and again you're down six and running the ball pretty well you, you can't really blame him. May face pressure again Kirk they have not yet converted 0 for 3 on third down and he's been a very very efficient passer on third down coming into this game. Remember the pressure came from right here on the last third down. Wolverines a flag before the snap. It's a false start. This is an offensive line that is rarely penalized prior to the snap. False start. Offense. Number six. Five yard penalty. And no that was Danny down. Davis, the receiver. So, mentioned the offensive line, really very disciplined, even in a tough road environment. At the bottom of the screen right here, he just starts to move. You're right. They have been. And, and you know, not a whole lot of false starts. The crowd noise a factor. They're doing a good job. Very well schooled team every week. You can always expect that from Paul Chris team. You know, the first penalty assessed tonight backs him up. Now it's third and 12. Wonderbrook had to backpedal. They had a twist and a stunt going. Groshek couldn't get it. It didn't matter because Devin Bush was right there. Quiddy Pay got a hand on the ball. Quiddy Pay not only got a hand on it, he, he, he read it and almost intercepted it. Watch him be able to feel this. Sees the back come out, and right there, he puts his right hand. He's known as a guy who can rush the quarterback, but really good job. Boy, he almost came up with an interception, which he could have walked into the end zone. So Don Brown and that Michigan defense, they win the chess match, and they get the Badgers to go three and out. Now Peoples Jones will try to give Michigan some field position before halftime, but he is driven back by Lottie to the 25. Escapes briefly. Peoples Jones, a dangerous returner. And finally they catch up to him and knock him down but the Wolverines will take over in plus territory. 209 before halftime you get 26 yards on that return. You just hold your breath when number nine is involved in special teams. This becomes a more and more complete player not only as a wide receiver but such a powerful punt returner it has the speed but also he can. He can get through any kind of arm tackles. It's a long punt, but not a lot of hang time. And so people's zones had a chance, and now Michigan has a chance to add to a six-point lead before the break. Higdon hasn't yet got on track. Just 11 yards rushing on his seven carries. They fake it to him, and Patterson looked downfield and now delivers a long throw, which is caught tight roping as People's Jones knocked out at the 30. Had to show his arm strength there. But also shows the offensive line giving him four or five seconds. All these routes downfield taking a long time. You can see how long it takes to develop. And Donovan People Jones, I think he almost started to give up, waiting for the quarterback to start to scramble. And an all out effort there wow. to try to knock that ball away by Burrell. What a job to catch it. Yeah. It did ball tip. Burrell's hand. Yeah, right off of his hand. Terrific concentration. 17 yard gain. Another play action on first down. Patterson 
Scrambling, can't escape, ball comes out. And the Wolverines fall on it. McCune, the tight end, grabs it way back at the 49. He carries the ball loosely, and the Badgers thought they could knock it out. Conley got it that time. Yeah, and he comes on the blitz. He's able to just kind of get to the outside around Karan Higdon and give the rest of that defense, and give them an assist there because they kept him in the pocket, forced him out. And when he started to, he just had no idea that Conley was chasing him down with that speed. Pep Hamilton said they've been working with Patterson on securing the ball better when he's scrambling around. He kind of holds it Manziel style. And now, tries to make up for it with a run. It's a quarterback draw, and Conley will force him out. But now it's third and 18, 47 seconds to go, and Patterson delivers a short one, knocked down after a very short gain. And just trying to get a little closer for Nordine, who has plenty of leg. And he's going to be tested because this is going to be a very long field goal attempt. We're not even sure where to put the field goal line because Mike Black, our spotter, charts the guys in warm up. I mean, typically, unless it's this kind of a situation at the end of the half of the game, Harbaugh's not going to trot him out there for a 60 yarder, but he's certainly capable. This is 53 yarder. And I think Nordine gets a little bit more amped up and more excited for these 50. 50 yard field goals than he does the, the short ones. And they'll let the play clock wind down, bring the offense off the field, and see if Nordine can make it a, a nine point lead. I, I think the uh, the clock, although it shows triple zero, they got the timeout just before the end of the half. That would be a gaffe if they didn't. And put three seconds back on. It's been one of those crazy years with Jim Harbaugh and officials. He probably thought, what now? I, tried, I was trying to call a timeout. So Nordine, who missed his first one, has made his last two. This is just a yard short of his career long. Drives it, but hooks it. You know, he has not had clean rotation on his kicks all night, even in warm-ups tonight. Mike Black, who Again, who's all over the kickers pregame and during the game, and we've seen that tonight. Even the kick he made, it had that same kind of rotation. It's a new playing surface here. The, the old field was rock hard. They replaced it slightly spongier. You want to make excuses for the kicker. <laughs> but he's got to get some yards from, and good decisions from Alex Hornibrook. Hence boots it, and Ambry Thomas says, yeah, I'm not going to worry about that. Deep in the end zone. But to be honest, we've not seen a little bit more physicality and more of the run game from Michigan. Jim Patterson a lot of chances to throw on first down and they try it again here. He's pressured and just heaves it. Conley who's had a big game so far him off the edge. Let's go to Maria Taylor down on the field. Well the focus is really simple for Michigan coming out of the locker room. Jim Harbaugh saying he told his team that they're going to have to stop the run after giving up 102 yards rushing to Wisconsin. Uh, and they also want to do a good job finishing drives. Five of their six possessions ended in Wisconsin territory but those two missed field goals he said they're shooting themselves in the foot right now. Left about 10 points on the field Maria and you see Scott Nelson the starting freshman safety from Detroit back in his home state had to sit out the first half because of a targeting last week he's going to come shot out of a cannon you get the feeling tonight here <laughs> Higdon picks his way you, you get a guy that back in his home state Kirk a young guy had to sit out the first half I and mean, look out he wants to make an impact right now it's been I keep talking about their running game this Scott Nelson is a physical safety will come up and you know he's a guy that knows this area very well from Detroit area so he's fired up to be able to play here in Ann Arbor but again they're trying to run the ball pretty physical there with T.J. Edwards and that defensive line. Been impressed tonight overall with the Wisconsin secondary with all their issues with not only the suspension of the first half of Nelson but also with uh, the corners with some injuries they played very very well. Totally agree. Michigan two of seven on third down need five here and Patterson will test one of those DBs and diving attempt at an interception by Nelson is a flag down on the play tried to get it to Nico Collins. Holding defense number five ten yard penalty from the previous spot. First down. That's Rashad Wild is one of those young guys at corner. We just complimented how great they've been playing, and of course they get tested, and there's a hold right in front of you without a question, grabbing a hold of Nico Collins the entire way down the ref. What a great view there. 
from the ref cam. You could see he had seen enough. Got his flag out and made the call. And Wild Goose just holding on the best he could, hoping to get away with it. Flag cam flying well before the football got there. It was obvious. And now on the end around, Peoples Jones gets a block on the edge, is knocked out hard hit at the 45 by both linebackers, Conley and Edwards. Such a disciplined defense. It's hard to trick them. Guys are typically right in the position that they need to be. Time Tyler Johnson tried to keep contained, but he could not. And Donovan Peoples Jones does have some great speed. He's able to at least get some positive yards, even though Wisconsin looked like they might be in position. The third time Peoples Jones has carried the football this year. This is Higdon. It's a receiving core. Remember, they, they had Kikoa Crawford transfer. Eddie McDoom, who was a big jet sweep guy, he transferred away. And Tariq Black, of course, the most talented receiver, broke a foot. He still hasn't played. Yeah, hoping to see Tariq Black maybe in the next uh, the next few weeks. Seems like he's recovering nicely. But you're right, Nico Collins and Donovan People Jones have kind of become the go to receivers for Shea Patterson. And if you throw in the big tight end, Zach Gentry. Third and one. Higdon. Knocked down, ball comes flying out, and it's sitting there on the sidelines. Did the Badgers recover before? No, it's going to be real Michigan football. But Reggie Pearson in his first football game in college caused the fumble. He comes up in run support. This is the first time he's played all year. He gets his helmet on the ball. Ball is up in the air. Keep in mind, Karan Higdon's one of the more physical backs in the Big Ten. But tonight, we've seen this freshman come in a number of times getting involved and making plays against the run. Physical yep. guy. Oh, just bounced there. Harrell had, a, had an idea about a scoop and score, but it just rolled over and touched the sidelines. There's a flag down on the punt. So we'll check that fair caught back at the 11-yard line. Flag back near the line of scrimmage. Very clean first half, but a couple of penalties early part of the third quarter so far. They're maybe looking, Kirk. Did they did they flatten the long snapper? Before we had a chance. They're trying to protect the long snappers. They obviously had their head down, snapping the ball. You're not allowed to to come over top of them and clock them. Well, there was a lot of there's there a big collision the there at the middle of the line. Both against the receiving team. Holding number 27. That penalty is declined. Personal foul. Roughing the snapper. By the defense, 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. Cameron Cheeseman, the long snapper, did get roughed. And he's getting congratulated by his teammates for drawing the penalty. But this is the rule they put in to protect these snappers who are in vulnerable positions. And it's going to now give the Wolverines the football back in Wisconsin territory. Well, Michigan catches a break. Right in the middle, obviously, right here, you can see the collision it's the call that they made. I don't know just a kind of a, a push where he, Chris I think you're right I think he drew that penalty as much as the, the physical contact itself. What a crucial call Michigan now up six new set of downs for the Badger 41. They fake it to Higdon. Patterson still looking to take that downfield shot. Now thrown into traffic. Almost intercepted. Threw it high. Wild Goose was in coverage and Ben Ginkle dropped way down there too. Yeah, I mean he has all day to throw and the reason is they are not blitzing. They are sitting back in zone. They have a safety running with the big tight end Zach Gentry who he normally like, likes to go to. And that time, Shea Patterson taking a chance and very fortunate that Andrew Van Ginkle did not come up with that interception. Went up in the air, had two hands on the ball, just not able to bring it down. He's 6'4", 236, and he drops into coverage frequently and does it well. Higdon 
Runs left. Behind blocks. Come on, Higdon. In the clear. Cuts it back. Down in the red zone. First down, Michigan. Finally, Higdon gets loose for a big run. Yeah, Bredesen, the left guard, will make a nice block. You'll see the right guard also pulling around here. Away new. Finally, they're able to beat. There's a nice cutback there. There's the big guard that's able to occupy Pearson to safety. And that's the Michigan offense that we've been seeing. So give them credit for coming up with some wrinkles, different formations, more of a spread approach tonight. But that time they went back to the old basics of Karan Higdon and that offensive line and picked up some good yardage. You see there, 15 yards he netted in the first 10. Got 25 there. And Michigan, after that, that penalty and the roughing the snapper, gives them new life on this drive. And now Michigan will spend the first timeout to talk about it. The guy Mahomes. Meanwhile, Wolverines now set up at the 16. Higdon, short game. Have a look at the penalty call. Cameron Cheeseman is the long snapper. By rule, you got to give the long snapper a second to get his head up before you hit him. He's not really I don't know. hit that violently. I think, you think he sold it really well. I think well. he sold it well. I think that's a gray area. I'm surprised they made the call. And Cheeseman's over there pumped up. He's made an impact play. In this. Sure did. Usually when you talk long snapper, it's because of a bad snap. Evans is the back to the right of Patterson. He's got the football, and Chris Evans, eager to make a big impact play tonight after missing the last three games, is spun down by Van Ginkle. Third down and about a yard. Pep Hamilton, is the offensive coordinator here, has done a good job of mixing up the looks, but these last three or four plays decided to trust this offensive line really for the first time all night in the running game. They failed on six straight third down attempts. Need a yard here. Evans still in the game. And it's a keeper and Patterson stretches for the end zone. Touchdown Michigan. See if he got in. Nice zone read. Been setting that up. He's been giving that a lot. He definitely stretches out to reach into the end zone. The pro progressive pylon cam is untouched. Need is not touched. Ball crosses the plane easily for a touchdown. But the zone read, we've seen him give that and give that. And this time, Wisconsin collapsed down on with Van Ginkle, he, who he read. He pulls it out and picks up the touchdown. Going to go for two here. Stretch it to a 14-point lead. Peoples Jones in motion. They fake the jet sweep. Patterson rolls it to the end zone. And an easy pitch and catch to Nico Collins. And the Wolverines in a drive that was prolonged by the Badger personal foul. Stretch it to 14. Teddy Carter was one of the wide receivers late 70s early 80s who made wide receivers stylish yep. with that jersey number and spatted it's a short kick and the Badgers number one Crookshank comes up at the 15 yard line and is knocked down after a short return there's remember, the touchdown run by Patterson remember it's third and one you've got nine guys in here thinking it's going to be a run to Chris Evans what he does is he reads the defensive end Van Ginkle who collapses down and makes it easy to get to the outside they're a man to man on the outside see it looks like he may have hurt his hand when he got into the end zone in fact when he came off he had a lot of blood coming off the looked like the back of that left hand Wearing a glove on his throwing hand, which is unusual. No glove on the left, and they're working on that cut. Meanwhile, Hornibrook now and Wisconsin finally see the football here in the third quarter, but they're down by 14. It's been a steady diet of Taylor. Down to Maria. What do you have, Maria? Yeah, guys, I'm told that for Shea Patterson, it's a small cut that's on his hand, and they're working on it right now. But precautionary, we can see that everyone else is warming up here on the sideline. A small cut. The, the athletic trainers, Maria, have a gift for understatement. That's a lot of He's leaking some oil there. <laughs> that's all hands on deck, making sure number two is feeling okay. He's had a big night 12 to 17, eight runs for a touchdown. See Dylan McCaffrey, Christian's younger brother, the backup here, checking out the situation. 
Remember the last time the Badgers needed an answer. They went right down the field and scored. They need one right now. They do. There's uh, Garrett Groshek. He runs it out near the marker. It'll be third and short. They still have not unleashed the passing game on early downs for Hornibrook. Now they talked about being patient in this game, and they sure, sure as heck are being patient. Nine minutes to <laughs> is go. It, are they third. being too patient? Is it time to unleash I, I, a little bit? I think bit? they're sticking to their plan. You know, I think their plan was to be able to be more balanced than they've been, but I also think that they feel like they're they're opening up some running lanes for these backs, especially Taylor. Well, this is a very manageable third down need just a yard but there is some urgency here to try to answer and keep this drive going Wolverines crowd the line and it's a first down Taylor's just hard to bring down with, with one defender yeah, that's what I was going to say I mean it's easy to say in this day and age just oh, you, you're down 14 you better start throwing it and going crazy I think you can stick to your guns with the running game but also at the same time if you find matchups you got to throw the football and you got to give Hornybrook a chance which I'm sure Paul Chris is going to do. You talk about the the course of the college football playoff chase being altered if Tungabaloa is knocked out. Badgers with a couple of offensive linemen who are dressed in tight end numbers in this power formation. Another first down run into heavy traffic. Not much for Taylor. Still not giving Hornibrook a chance to, to throw on, yeah. on first down. Yeah, I, I love what Paul Chris said to us this week. He said, you know, there's not going to be a whole lot of trickery in this game you know they, they do what they do and we do what we do and we've got to be able to execute and I, I, I can understand you know 25 passing yards I think you're eventually going to see Hornybrook start to make those throws but I think he's picking his spots and not doesn't want to go into panic mode here with still halfway to go in the third quarter which I think is I don't know if a first down throw qualifies as panic mode no, but to break away from your your game plan would here's a second and long throw and that's incomplete trying to get the ball to A.J. Taylor it's just not clicking tonight uh, no it's, it's either Hornybrook makes a poor decision or a poor throw or he makes a good throw and, and the wide receivers can't hold on to the football you know he's got time he squeezes it in that's a tight window getting the ball around Devin Bush Taylor it wasn't perfect but still you'd expect Taylor to be able to go down and make that play He's the guy that made a crucial third quarter touchdown catch in the win over the Wolverines a year ago and now Wisconsin one for five on third down needs seven Hornibrook pressured and delivers incomplete turning and looking for a flag with Danny Davis Brandon Watson good coverage and this time the Badgers cannot answer here comes the punt team boy Brandon Watson not only was a good coverage Chris he looks like he's running the route watch him right here start to run in front of the receiver he looks like he's he's out there running the route he was so dialed in on that Got some excellent corners here Brandon Watson's had a good year David Long they don't even challenge David Long he just takes receivers right out of the game so the Badgers is still sitting there at 25 yards passing. And Lottie. Deep boot. But it's too deep. And it's going to roll into the end zone for a touchback. So Shea Patterson will come back and told he's going to have glove on both hands now. Maria Taylor got a close up view of the treatment to Patterson's cut hand. What did you see Maria. Well you could see that the cut was on top of his hand almost in between his pinky and that second finger and you could see the athletic training staff really wrapping it so there's a lot of padding on right now. Um, we also saw him take a little bit of glue on top of that cut and so it's wrapped under the glove. He usually only wears one but going with two now to protect that hand with the cut on it. So the Wolverines trying to add to a 14 point lead take over after the touchback and this is Higdon who runs left and Breaks into a crease and gains nine. And going back to running the football, you know, Shea Patterson, if you're just tuning in, has had a game where they played a little bit more on the edges, giving him a chance to be able to show his athletic ability. We've seen him create tonight. We've seen the athletic ability on his own read, makes the right read, then has the speed to be able to get close to the end zone. And then that last possession, again, another zone read, reads Van Ginkle, and then gets into the end zone and scores that touchdown and has that sustains that injury that Maria just filled you in on. So he's in an 81 yard run to set up a touchdown and then a touchdown run to there. 12 for 17 pass and Higgin breaks free into the secondary and bangs out across the 45 yard line as the Wolverines start to wear down that Badger D. Well this nice job of the right side getting some good blocks opening things up and then you'll see 
five. Wangler coming around to be able to pick up a kickout block, and that opened it up. Nice job again. This offensive line, we thought it might be Wisconsin's offensive line start to assert themselves in the second half, but really it's been Michigan's. First appearance in the backfield for True Wilson, the sophomore from Warren, Michigan. He's got it. And they say true whenever he gets a chance to make an impact play. Another Wolverine, a little dinged up. Higdon now on the sideline. He's been the rock. He's been the workhorse with Evans out injured the last three. They're working on him. The right the eye there. Right eye. And Dylan McCaffrey is now in the game. So the backup. No, excuse me. He's he's in the game, but not under center. Patterson. He's at the left. Yeah, they get a little trickery perhaps here. Now they're going to motion McCaffrey into the backfield. And it could be a double pass. Patterson looked that way, flips it back the other yeah. side. They were trying to draw Wisconsin's defense that way. They, filled you, they fooled you and Blackie, but the only people they didn't fool was Wisconsin's oh, defense. Me. I, I, come kidding. on. I'm just kidding. I, no, but they, they, all that, all that, they lined him up in the slot. They motioned him over. He did a clap. Did you hear the yeah. clap? He's doing everything he can to try to get the attention of Wisconsin, but they're in position of Kron Higdon and continues to get worked on that right eye. So it's third and long and a lot of different wrinkles tonight for Michigan. None of them have been terribly productive, I have to say. Evans bunched to the far left of the formation. Patterson backpedaling, chased, and just has to throw it away. T.J. Edwards got near him again, and the Badgers force a punt. When you go empty, you, this is the risk that you take because if they're gonna if they're gonna blitz you, the ball's gonna have to get out quickly. And these routes right now, there's nowhere for him to go with that football. So empty means they're gonna blitz. Ball's got to go out quick on third and nine. And Wisconsin with Jim Leonard brought the pressure. Good talk with T.J. Edwards this week, who talked about his buddy Conley and the experienced middle, the rock of this defense, trying to help the younger guys step up, communicate, get ready for a football at this level. They've done a good job. Long punt by Hart is driven out of bounds, and Wisconsin will take over at the nine. Taylor tries to bounce it. Good pursuit by the Wolverines. They knock him down after a four yard gain. Hawkins, a sophomore, hasn't played that much football. Taylor. And then Davis breaking free. Danny Davis shot out there, gets out across the 45 yard line. Well, Michigan's going to bring blitzing. A lot of blitzing right here. He's going to come in motion, but watch the block in the background here, which was key. Right there in the top, left tackle actually, Van Lennon gets up on the, the defensive back that was running with Davis, who had him man to man. Very athletic play by a big 300 pound tackle to get up that far to block a safety running with Davis and it freed him up to get a lot more yards. Got 37, the second big running play for a Badger wide receiver. End around again, and this is Pryor who scored in a similar play, but that time Brandon Watson wrestles him down after a yard and a half. And a very different defense instead of playing that man to man, that time they're in zone and Watson in position to make the play. But when you have success out there on the outside, it, it still allows him to go back to their bread and butter, which is being able to run into the interior of the Michigan defense. To the Badgers with time bleeding away here in the third quarter. Desperate to cut into this 14 point deficit. Second and eight. Got to hurry. Just get it off. Groshek running behind a wall of blockers wrestled out physically at the 42 by Watson. It'll be third down and about two or three. Groshek is a fun back to watch a high school quarterback in his career senior year he went over 2500 yards as a running quarterback and of course he fits in perfectly as a compliment to Jonathan Taylor 511 and about 220 pounds he's done some wildcat running at quarterback this year for the Badgers third and three but they have two plays to get it Hornibrook Drops back, delivers, incomplete. It's just not clicking. That was an inaccurate throw. 
Davis was open briefly and now Chris is going to send out the punt team on fourth down. Well, they, the pressure got to him eventually and in fact as soon as he threw that football he had pressure right in his face and probably affected the accuracy of the throw. I know part of their success on the road is never to panic to stay the course but choosing to punt the ball from the Michigan 42 sort of interesting. See if Lonnie can pin Michigan back. Kicks it with backspin and it's going to land in the end zone. So Hornibrook has a conversation with Paul Christ, who, of course, does call the plays here. It's been one of the, the rough nights. He had the three picks here a couple of years ago, the game that he, he called a nightmare. It hasn't been that kind of a game. One pick, but so little productivity. Higdon. Tries to bounce it, breaks a tackle, gets a block, and come on, Higdon starting to get loose now as the Wolverines move to the 36. Does a good job of staying in here and then bouncing it. He, he sets up the blocks by staying true and then gets to the outside with division. Brought the linebackers more into the middle, allowed his linemen to be able to get up to them, and then that cut, that quick, quick acceleration to go with that physicality is what makes him so good. Don't go on fourth down kick it into the end zone and in one play Michigan's got the ball right back where Wisconsin had it a minute ago. Higdon wrestled down after a short gain by Zach Bond inside of two minutes in the quarter. Jim Harbaugh and Pep Hamilton that 14 point lead that offense that we saw most tonight spread shotgun letting Shea Patterson do his thing almost like a point guard. It's a very different approach these last couple series. Arbaugh's not afraid to go to the four minute offense in the third quarter, is he? <laughs> <laughs> but they're starting to win the battle up front now much better. Evans is the back. And he darts through the middle, knocked down by Van Ginkle. It'll be third down. Only need a yard, though. Starting to wear down that was that front three. Remember the best defensive lineman for Wisconsin, Loudermilk is out with an ankle. And they really miss him. Matt Henningsen, a walk on number 92, taking his place. And the Wolverines move the sticks. Chew on more clock. Evans has a first down. Don't have to run another play in the third quarter. And they won't. So Michigan adds a touchdown and a two-point conversion in the third quarter. And they will take a two-touchdown lead to the final period here in the big house under the lights as they try for a long-awaited around here quality win against a highly ranked opponent. The kind of game that has eluded the Wolverines often in recent years work to be done but an impressive first three quarters by the maze and blue different approach here in this second half a lot more physicality and running the football 15 carries 104 yards second half alone and then in that third quarter 106 rushing negative one passing you don't see that often Higdon cuts it back and into Wisconsin territory 94 yards rushing Higdon Approaching the century mark, can he get out of this carry? Cuts it back, and yeah, Higdon over 100 yards and deep into Badger territory. Again, that, this is an example of what vision can do for a running back. This play is designed to go up into the middle. There's nowhere to go. He's able to bounce that, and again, how physical of a runner he is for somewhat of an undersized back. Being looked at by athletic trainers, and now it's a keeper. Patterson in the clear again. Slips to tackle, gets a nice block on the edge from Collins, and another first down. And again, zone read all night. They've been running now here lately with Kron Higdon, so right here, the collapse by the defensive end, Bond, he has enough speed to be able to get outside of him. So even though Bond was hesitant, didn't quite commit down, he still knew that he had the leverage and the speed to get outside of him, picks up a nice block. Take out the sack yardage, well over 100 rushing. Patterson still a chance to join Karan Higdon as 100-yard rushers tonight against this Badger defense. And now it's Evans who picks his way for about a yard and a half. You feel like any points 
Michigan get on this drive and the Badgers the way they're not throwing the ball in deep deep trouble here. Yeah it's getting close to 13 minutes to go and you know the one thing about this Michigan offense it's a combination of a lot of different eyes and, and, and thoughts and backgrounds you know about Jim Harbaugh and Pep Hamilton Ed Warner of course who's come over he spent a lot of time with Urban Meyer at Ohio State so you see kind of a, a combination of a lot of different theories. Higdon got a block there from Ben Mason who just planted somebody but good pursuit not much there and go back to, the, to those coaches even Jim McElwain who's a head coach at Florida last year you, you combine all those guys in an office and when they're sitting trying to pre prepare an offense and now you've got a quarterback that's used to being more of a dual threat guy there's Jim McElwain to the far right Pep Hamilton there in the middle and so that's why you see such a variety and such a, a kind of a, so many different wrinkles like this right look, here. Look at this. Yeah, you got four receivers bunched to the right. Empty backfield on third and nine. Badgers showing a four-man rush. Patterson gets it out very quickly. Evans tries to slip a tackle and is going to be knocked down short of the first down. Hard hit by Burrell and Edwards. So here comes another field goal attempt. And this will give them a chance, like you said, Chris, up 14 here. With the way Wisconsin has looked offensively, this could be potentially a knockout punch to make it three possession game. Yeah, Wisconsin is not built for the quick strike, and on one of Alex Hornibrook's least productive nights ever, this would be big. But remember, Nordine has been a little unreliable tonight. He's missed a two of them. And this one a hooking, but it's through. So Michigan with a 35 yard field goal does stretch the lead to 17. Serious ur urgency now for Hornibrook and company. You see, he's going to have, he has 10 pass attempts right now. He may end up with over double of that after these next few series. Quick shank from the goal line. And the Wolverines pet him in and knock him down at the 15. It's been a it's been a troubling night for the quarterback. Yeah, he just hasn't been able to really settle in. He hasn't had a ton of opportunities, but when he has, you can see he's falling off. The balance isn't there. That affects his accuracy. Michigan known as a team that can pressure a quarterback. Good job there by Dwumfor, and you can see he's just trying to stay alive. And then at other times, when his offensive line trying to give him time, Michigan still, even when they don't get the sack or the hurry, they still push it. The Wisconsin offensive line back into the face of Hornibrook, who you would think is going to have some urgency, a little bit more of an up tempo approach, you would think, now down by 17. Flyer in motion, and they start this drive with a running play and a gain out across the 20. He's a guy that shakes off mistakes very well. I mentioned it's his 29th start, always working on mechanics, works with our buddy George Whitfield, has gone to San Diego. They go to Nashville every year. He's an incredibly hungry student of the game. Oh, he is. He, he's cerebral with his approach. He's a guy that's always in the film room, dissecting and trying to understand the defense, their tendencies. And that's what you'd expect from a guy who's been around for three years as a starter. Just has not been able to get on track tonight. And they just haven't really thrown the ball that much. Just three of ten. Second and five. Taylor again. And it's going to be wrestled down. It's going to be third and two. And it's, it's, it's a must make third down conversion here. You can't keep any hope alive. A methodical start to this drive, even though they're down 17. I know, I know they don't panic, but I, maybe it's time to panic, Kirk. Maybe just put that finger on the panic button right about now. A little urgency, huh? <laughs> Saying. Brown trying to make it tough. Noisy on this must make third and two. You better hurry up. You not want to burn a timeout here. If they're going to come back, they're going to need all of them. Play clock at two. And it's a play action on third and two. Hornybrook dumps it up. Intercepted. Picked up by Lavert Hill. Pick six, Wolverines. They'll get a flag for excessive celebration, but nobody here cares. Hill has stuck the dagger in Wisconsin with a pick six. And a Michigan defense that has been out.
outstanding on every drive except one. And has put this game away. Carlo Kemp pressure. They let him throw yep. on third and two, and that misfire too. Yeah, Carlo Kemp eventually got in there. I don't know what Alex Hornibrook was looking at. He had his tight end wide open there, bench wall, and he just waited and waited, and then eventually tries to go over top of Lavert Hill. Watch the tight end to our left. Shows a block. Goes in the flat. He's wide After open. After the play was over. He throws it late. Unsportsmanlike conduct. And Hill, to his credit, goes Michigan. up and makes a play on the ball and walks into the end zone. Unsportsmanlike conduct. Michigan, number six. That's the first unsportsmanlike conduct foul on each of those players. A single 15-yard penalty will be assessed on the kickoff. We will have the trifle point. Again, nobody cares about that because Michigan is now up 23 with the PAT coming. Third pick six of the season for Don Brown's defense. Three different Wolverines. And for Hill, who was injured and missed last year's loss to Wisconsin, that was a sweet one. Yeah, he's, he, he was able to take advantage of the missed mistake there by Hornibrook, who just paused just a little bit too long, had the open tight end, who, by the way, had nobody in front of him. If he throws that on time, tight end is running a long way. And again, all the analytics. This guy, Hornibrook, the fewest negative plays of any Big Ten quarterback. Michigan to kick off, but now it's 31-7. They've added 18 points after halftime. The pick six by Hill, who took one to the house against Cincinnati last year. His first interception this season. And the line drive kick is fielded at the 30. Go. Run for about 15 yards there. Go back to the touchdown show you that I was talking about here. There's a lot of traffic for this Michigan defense to work around tight end at the bottom bench wall. If he throws it right now, and I know that you have pressure here from Carlo Kemp, but look in front of him. If he goes over top of LeVert Hill, there's nobody in front of bench wall. At the very least, he's able to pick up 20, 25, maybe even 30 yards. But instead, he waits. He's actually looking for his receiver going left to right. By the time he came back, Carlo Kemp was in his face and hit him, and that allowed Lavert Hill to make the play on the ball. So the glaring exception, Hornibrook never lost a road start except once here at Michigan Stadium. And now he's got five interceptions combined in his two road starts in Ann Arbor. Rocha in the backfield there in third down mode on first down. There's another incompletion. I mean, literally nothing is working. Jake Ferguson is a reliable tight end. He drops that one. And the quarterback comparison is our Pacific Life game summary. Sh sharp contrast tonight. Yeah, no, no doubt about it. Uh, Hol you know, Hornibrook has not only struggled, this offense has just not been able to be very balanced. Meanwhile, Shea Patterson, two different approaches offensively. One where it was more open, more of a spread approach, where he made a lot of plays with his feet. And then the, really in the second half, it's been more about the running game for Michigan. Wolverine showing pressure. Groshek takes the handoff, spins free, and dives for eight yards. Wisconsin is a team that just doesn't get blown out under Paul Chris. You realize that going back even before he became head coach in 2011, only two teams have beaten Wisconsin by double digits Ohio State and Alabama. And both those teams that beat him by double digits are more than 10 points, I should say. We're going to win national championships. This is a rarity. Roshek plowing. He's not going to get there. Stop short on third down as Chase Winovich was helped out, and now it's fourth down. Yeah, great play by Winovich. This defense, we've been talking so much about Hornibrook, but love this attacking approach. See at the bottom, Winovich, the area that he's improved the most, using his hands, getting penetration, being involved, and in stopping the running game. Now he's taunting the Wisconsin sideline, saying, Run at me, run at me. <laughs> he wants it. Well, they ran at him last year with some success, but. Old 15 with the flowing hair was ready for everything tonight. And Christ choosing to punt now down 24. Lottie just boots it away. That's a concession. And not even the punt works well. <laughs> Hits and bounces back to the 32. Michigan back to work. Trying to put the finishing touches on a satisfying route tonight. We need Rodgers to deliver a victory on Monday. It's True Wilson. 
Young back getting the turn as Michigan tries to just chew on this clock and get out of here with a very satisfying victory that would get them to four and zero in the conference. Yeah, this is Michigan. They needed a win like this up against the top 15 opponent. This program and, and, and really this team after starting the year with a loss to Notre Dame gone back to the drawing board. You got to give them a lot of credit now for six games since then. Team that's heading in a very very different direction from that opener in South Bend. You work on the play clock. Run it down snap it at five. And Wilson again bangs forward and gets within a yard. Talked about the Michigan remaining schedule. They try to beat the teams that beat them last year. Michigan State, a team that's beaten them eight of the last ten, and a team that's going to come off a big road win at Penn State. I was going to say that's that's a different Michigan State team now as far as their confidence, and it's a rivalry game, and it's a game that Michigan's been pointing to because of some struggles in, in recent years with Jim Harbaugh. Penn State, same way, they get them here after a bye week, and of course the the big one at the end of the year against Ohio State down in Columbus. If the Wolverines can get all through that perhaps a rematch with Wisconsin which is still in the driver's seat in the Big Ten West in Indy a third down play and Wilson charges out near midfield fresh legs hungry attitude for the young back and the Wolverines can grind more clock now he is a fun guy to watch when he gets his hands on the ball it's fun to hear this crowd react to every time 13 gets the ball get a social media Maria he was harassing McGregor's opponent. Habib so much that Habib <laughs> blocked him on Twitter. I, I know you're a tough guy. Do not mess with that dude. <laughs> no, no, I, I wouldn't recommend that. In the last couple of years, based oh, on his yeah. skills and the wrinkles yeah. we're seeing out here, I mean, it's a combination of all those different coaches and and the skill set of Shea Patterson, who looks like it's done for the night with McCaffrey coming in. The backup from Colorado, and he keeps it, and he can run. McCaffrey, not quite Christian speed, but enough to score. And the Wolverines are pouring it on. A beatdown in the big house. 44 yards for the backup. I mean, how about the bloodlines? I mean, McCaffrey. Are you kidding me? I mean, I say he's not as fast as Christian because hardly anybody is. But I know. Six, but five? Come on. I mean, he got out, and they told us he can go. He, he said, wait, yard run call back. Pep Hamilton penalty. said he can go. And, and we said, really? He, and he raised his eyebrows like, no, no, bro, for real. Born to he, run. He, he said, can right? go. He can go. I was like, all right. I hope we get to see it. So Six, we've, seen, five. we've seen an 81 yard run by Patterson to set up a touch set. His backup comes in and he gallops 44 for a touch. The cube picks up a great block right there. And I love his instincts as a ball carrier. Just cuts right underneath that block. And then he outruns TJ Edwards. And the big fella takes it into the end zone. Sweet. First career rushing touchdown. They got a whole bunch of talent at the quarterback position on this Michigan roster at the moment. Baby of the family. Big future here. Who knows what Patterson will do. He's got another year of eligibility. Good for him, man. Good for him to get a chance to come out here. That does it. Get a lot of opportunities, but 34 yards and a touchdown on the first play he's in. They said that uh, he's always been fast, but he's added a bunch of muscle. He's gotten much stronger, more durable as well. And beating Colorado in the Coliseum tonight. Yeah, about to kick off there. You'll be dialed in. I'll be right with you. Only break of what's been a nightmare. His hit as he throws, and the ball just falls into the turf. He was pressured by our guy Winovich. He, he finally got to him. We haven't seen him have many chances to be able to get after Hornybrook, but this time Hornybrook has to step up and he's lucky to get that ball off before Zwinovich gets to him. Kirk, we're still sitting there at three completions for 25 yards in this Badger passing game. Three. Wolverine showing pressure again. They don't bring it. And Winniebrook delivers high, inaccurate throw. The last time this has been an upset filled Saturday in the sport for the top 10. Notre Dame didn't bring their A game, but just by surviving, maybe one of the biggest winners of the day. True. Winniebrook in traffic, just throws it out of bounds. 
incomplete on the far side for Groshek, and it's fourth down. And yeah, Groshek went out of bounds. That's why, that's why you saw the officials' hat come down. For now, the offense is still on the field. Did not really see this coming. We knew about the ferocity of this Wolverine defense. We also knew that this quarterback and this team had been outstanding on the road. This is going to be just the second loss for Paul Christ away from home. Both of them will be here. Fourth and ten. Wolverines rush four. Hornibrook still pressured, looking for a man, and lofts it downfield in the traffic, and the catch is made by Jake Ferguson in Michigan territory. Finally, the tight end able to make a play in the fourth completion of the night. Coach Harbaugh got the cleats going tonight. See him in warm up. You'd think he's definitely, at the very least, covering a kickoff. He does wear those cleats around the office every day. Hornibrook from the pocket flips it off. Groshek cuts back, slips the tackle, spinning and still running hard and stretching near first down yardage inside the 30. Badger is still fighting, but a lot too little too late. Pressure again, escapes. And lofts it down, jump ball incomplete in the end zone. And it was Pryor trying to get free of Ambry Thomas. Thing is, when he has tried to break free, remember the style of defense that Michigan plays. They they leave guys like Ambry Thomas and David Long, Lavert Hill, even their even the safeties. They leave them on islands, and their whole goal with his defense is to get to you. Before you can get separation from these wide receivers, from the, the defensive backs. Works not just tonight, works almost every week. Wolverines trying to bring the pressure again in third and one. And a downfield shot is fire, makes a nice catch down at the two yard line. He beat Hill that time. And, and you know, Kendrick Pryor, only a sophomore, but does a good job. There's that man to man, that tight press man to man with Levert Hill, but he does a good job of using his hands to be able to get separation at the last minute. You can see they're both kind of pushing and grabbing off of each other, and at the last second, Pryor gets away with just a little nudge to get that separation. First and goal. Morning, Brooke. Across the middle and caught for a touchdown by A.J. Taylor. So beginning the drive with just 25 yards passing. He gets 75 yards passing in that possession. But as we said, way too little too late. Yeah, that, that obviously this shows you what he can do. Those last two passes, I think we thought we might see more of that. It's really good coverage and back-to-back -back plays. And because of the accuracy of the throws, Wisconsin's able to come up with a couple of big plays and of course the touchdown. Third touchdown reception for Taylor who spends a lot of time with Hornibrook in the offseason. They went out to San Diego went to Nashville worked on their routes. And his preparation has paid off. Now they're going to go for two play clock at two Hornibrook back pedals and throws short of the goal line and nowhere near the goal line is prior that time so 38 13. And there's Don Brown, whose defense has done its job and then some. Disappointed to give up the touchdown there, though. One of the great personalities in college football. You know, in his defense, since he has come into Ann Arbor and, and joined Jim Harbaugh, almost every year, they're one of the top defenses. You look at all the stats, scoring defense, total defense, pass defense, sacks, tackles for a loss. But when you get a chance to sit down with him and talk football, he, I, I think he would sit and talk for five hours. Badgers have two different kickers out there to that execute the onside kick. Hence is out there. He's the regular kickoff guy. PJ Rosowski also in Michigan spotted that, so they're going to spend the time out to get the hands team ready. Ski. Hints number 39 also there, so it's going to be Rosowski who boots it up and it gets the kind of hop you look for, but Michigan will make the recovery. So the Wolverines have possession. Part here in the big house. 
And it hasn't often been in these big games when the top opponents come in here, but the Wolverines have been really dominant tonight. They left a lot of points on the field in the first half, but this score could be worse than it is right now. Yeah, and, and, and I think we touched on this a, a few minutes ago, but I think it's worth bringing up again. This, this Michigan program had so much build up and hype after some some tough games, individual games, big high profile games. They get ready for their first game against Notre Dame and they lay an egg. And even some of their own fans were frustrated with Jim Harbaugh and give Jim Harbaugh and, and these, these coaches and players a lot of credit. Like I said, they, they kind of have reinvented their offense and they continue to tweak it and, and find that identity that works. Yeah, he didn't need to come back. <laughs> he, he got the message before the game started. He came, they came out swinging. Whole bunch of Michigan backups in the game. You saw Milton, who was in there earlier for a Wildcat snap. He's at quarterback now, and they get Christian Turner, the freshman running back, with a carry there. Well, Talked to Pep Hamilton before the game, and I think all of us assume McCaffrey is the next guy, and he actually is jogging back into the game. But I think they're pretty confident Joe Milton is a guy that also can lead this offense. We saw him in, the, in like the second series of the game. He was impressive in warmups. Oh yeah. So McCaffrey back in there. Amari Samuels is the back. As even the Wolverine hardcore fans searching deep in the program. Did you think you'd see Wisconsin Michigan with a bunch of guys getting their first action in mop up duty. I did not No. No they're just going to keep getting these guys as many reps as they can just rotating quarterbacks along with other players. Harbaugh is going to beat his good buddy Paul Chris we mentioned the tight end coach at, at the Chargers when Harbaugh was there considers him a professional friend but for Chris it just wasn't there he calls the plays the offense could never get anything going with the passing game defense got worn down and on the exchange it's Turner dropped for a short loss it's not a crippling loss for the Badgers chances of getting to Indy winning the West they're still in the driver's seat it's a non divisional loss the win at Iowa was huge figure Hornibrook's going to bounce back but this one will sting a little bit they, they flopped in a big stage yeah they did they did and, and the, the, because this is a veteran team this is something where you're going to go back and, and get this team to be able to refocus and get ready to finish strong you're right the Big Ten West is Wisconsin's to lose regardless of what happened tonight even the loss to BYU. They could still get their goal, which is to get to Indianapolis and still try to win a Big Ten championship. Milton in at quarterback. And he's dancing around. And Joe Milton shows the speed. Makes a man miss. And tight rope still running. Every Michigan quarterback who runs the ball tonight just rips off huge gains. That was Milton's turn. And I was, I was going to say, they're sitting here working clock, but the quarterbacks are running. I don't know if McCaffrey was going to get a chance. This time it's Milton. Just freelancing a play again designed to his left picks up a few blocks doesn't go out of bounds he's trying to do what McCaffrey did he's trying to get that ball into the end zone ball down at the 14 yard line now this is this is almost like an old Steve Spurrier rotation he comes out and now McCaffrey and finally it's going to be a victory formation look at that in the second half. He only had to throw the ball, Kirk, for four yards, 238 against this Badger defense. Cassidy Hubbard, the Ford wrap up show. She'll take you through all the upsets of the top 10 teams today and this beat down of the big house. And you got to believe, not only just a big win for Michigan, but with all the upsets today, you're filling out your top 10. How far up after this impressive performance? Does Michigan go? They might be up into the top five or six in the country. Notre Dame, a big winner, of course, the yeah. only team that's beaten Michigan this year. 111,360 in the big house witnessed a mugging. And as the Badgers, one of the great road teams in this sport, came in here and got manhandled. All smiles for Winovich. That Michigan defense was just. Tremendous. The oh, by the way, touchdown conceded late, but they took it away twice. The pick six by Lavert Hill. They kept Taylor, the nation's leading rusher, in check. He rushed for 101, but it was on 17 carries. 